ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सुनील वर्मा एंड विथ मी इज प्रशांत कुमार सिन्हा द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सेज एवरी सेक्टर रिलेटेड टू द ग्रोथ इंजन ऑफ द कंट्री इज रनिंग एट फुल कैपेसिटी and the financially weak are getting the benefits of development for the first time prime minister commissions the first indigenous aircraft carrier ins vikrant in kochi launches development projects of around 3800 crore rupees in mangaluru india becomes fifth largest economy of the world with imf's growth forecast of more than 7% this year home minister amit shah to chair the 30th meeting of southern zonal council in tiruvananthapuram today US slams China for continued violation of human rights in Xinjiang, Tibet and its other regions. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan calls for strengthening cooperation in educating education and skilling with Indonesia and Australia. National Rifle Association announces Indian squad for the upcoming ISSF World Championship. And in cricket, Akshar Patel replaces injured Ravindra Jadeja in the indian team playing the asian cup prime minister narendra modi has said the government is making sure that those who were forgotten due to their weak financial conditions are not neglected he said small farmers small traders fishermen street vendors and crores of such people have started getting the benefits of the country's development for the first time He was speaking after inaugurating and laying the foundation stone of mechanization and industrialization projects worth around 3800 crore rupees in Mangaluru yesterday. Aaj haji ke baad dashakon tak hamare yahan aisi sthiti rahi ki sirf sadhan sampann walon ko hi vikas ka labh mila jo aarthik drishti se kamzor the unhe pehli baar विकास के लाभ से जोड़ा गया जिनको आर्थिक दृष्टि से छोटा समझकर भुला दिया गया था हमारी सरकार उनके साथ भी खड़ी है छोटे किसान हो छोटे व्यापारी हो मछुआरे हो रेहड़ी पटरी ठेले वाले हो ऐसे करोड़ों लोगों को पहली बार देश के विकास का लाभ मिलना शुरू हुआ है the prime minister said the projects will increase the ease of living and employment especially in karnataka he said that every sector related to the growth engine of the country is running at full capacity today mr modi said the service sector is also moving towards rapid growth he said that the impact of pli schemes can be seen very clearly in the manufacturing sector remarking on the five vows the prime minister said that the first of the five vows that he had talked about from the red fort is the creation of a developed india he said to build a developed india it is very necessary to expand the manufacturing sector of the country make in india विकसित भारत के निर्माण के लिए देश के मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर का मेक इन इंडिया विस्तार करना बहुत जरूरी है विकसित भारत के निर्माण के लिए जरूरी है हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़े दुनिया में हमारे प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट के मामले में कम्पिटिटिव हो ये सस्ते और सुगम लॉजिस्टिक्स के बिना संभव ही नहीं है इसी सोच के साथ पिछले आठ वर्षों से देश के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर अभूतपूर्व काम हो रहा अर्लियर येस्ट डे द प्राइम मिनिस्टर कमीशन द फर्स्ट इंडिजिनस एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर आई एन एस विक्रांत एट कोच इन शिपयार इन कोची एंड ऑल्सो अनवेल द न्यू नेवल एंड साइन फॉर द इंडियन नेवी मिस्टर मोदी कॉल दट अ रेड लेटर डे इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया विक्रांत विशाल है विराट है विहंगम है विक्रांत विशिष्ट है विक्रांत विशेष भी है विक्रांत केवल एक युद्धपोत नहीं है ये इक्कीसवीं सदी के भारत के परिश्रम प्रतिभा प्रभाव और प्रतिबद्धता का प्रमाण है यदि लक्ष्य तुरंत है यात्राएं दिगंत है समंदर और चुनौतियां अनंत है तो भारत का उत्तर है विक्रांत 
the Prime Minister said, be it territorial security or economic security, India is witnessing huge opportunities. He exuded the pride that every Indian is experiencing on the commissioning of INS Vikrant. India has leaped past the United Kingdom to become the fifth largest economy of the world. International Monetary Fund said India took a lead in the final three months of 2021 to become the fifth biggest economy. According to GDP figures from IMF, India extended its lead in the first quarter. IMF said the Indian economy is forecast to grow more than 7% this year. A world-beating rebound in Indian stocks this quarter has just seen their weighting rise to the second spot in the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, trailing only China's. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will inaugurate the 30th meeting of the Southern Zonal Council at Kovalam in Tiruvananthapuram this morning. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan and his counterpart from other southern states, administrators of the Union territories of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep will participate in the program. The Home Minister is the Chairman of the Southern Zonal Council comprising Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Puducherry. There are five zonal councils in the country that were set up in 1957. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has called for strengthening cooperation in education and skilling with Indonesia and Australia. Mr. Pradhan held a bilateral meeting with his Indonesian counterpart Nadim Anwar Makarim in Bali yesterday. The two ministers had fruitful discussions on further expanding the academic and skill development partnerships and also realizing the full potential of comprehensive strategic partnership between both countries. Both leaders explored opportunities for collaborations in education and skilling, especially in the areas of curriculum design, student exchange and research. Mr. Pradhan also held a bilateral meeting with Minister for Early Childhood Education and Minister of Youth of Australia, Dr. Anne Ellie. They had productive conversations towards deepening engagements in the field of early childhood and school education between both countries. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal will visit San Francisco and Los Angeles in the United States from Monday to attend the first ever in-person ministerial meeting of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, IPEF. Mr. Goyal will also attend the India-US Strategic Partnership Forum conference. The IPEF was launched jointly by the United States and other partner countries of the Indo-Pacific region on the 23rd of May this year at Tokyo. During the six-day visit, Mr. Goyal will also interact with eminent business persons, U.S. officials and industry leaders to fortify the partnership between the two nations and strengthen trade and economic ties. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. It showcases a journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. Reliving the journey of India since independence over the last 75 years with All India Radio. From 15th August, the series is being broadcast on All India Radio, 100.1 FM Gold Channel, Prime Time News Bulletins and across all its platforms. Tune in to stay updated with All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of the Bharat Ratna Awardees from 1991 to 1999. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. 
It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of the Bharat Ratna Awardees from 1991 to 1999. आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ रीलिविंग द जर्नी ऑफ इंडिया सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस ओवर द लास्ट 75 फाइव ईयर्स विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन ऑगस्ट द सीरीज इज बींग ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो हंड्रेड पॉइंट वन एफ एम गोल्ड चैनल प्राइम टाइम न्यूज बुलेटिन एंड अक्रॉस ऑल इट्स प्लेटफॉर्म ट्यून इन टू स्टे अपडेटेड विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो In 1991 Rajiv Gandhi former prime minister was awarded posthumously Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel the first deputy prime minister and Murarji Desai former prime minister was also conferred with the award in the same year in 1992 Abdul Kalam Azad first minister of education of free india was awarded posthumously and Satyajit Ray lifetime oscar winning filmmaker author and composer was also given the award Industrialist, philanthropist and aviation pioneer J.R.D. Tata received the award in the same year. I think that uh, from a technological point of view, management point of view, Indian industry, at least big industry today, is a very different animal to what it was when I first became uh, a director of Tata's. There is a, a quality consciousness that didn't exist in the old days. We mustn't forget that it's not so long ago, perhaps a hundred years ago, when nobody would touch a Japanese product. Now they are the leaders, perhaps in most products, largely on the basis of quality. So, first of all, the, there is a big change. In 1997, Gulzari Lal Nanda, former interim prime minister, was honored. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, aerospace and defense scientist was also conferred with the award. French education is a lifelong learning, particularly containing three components according to me. Number 1, learning to learn. Number 2, learning to live. After all, where do you learn? Learning to live. Third one, learning to survive. In difficulties, we have to survive also. So education should give us learning to learn, learning to live and learning to survive. Aruna Asafali, freedom fighter activist was awarded posthumously in the same year. In 1998, MS Subulakshmi, Karnatic classical vocalist and Chidambaram Subramanyam, freedom fighter and former Union Minister of Agriculture were honored with the award. In 1999, freedom fighter and close associate of Mahatma Gandhi, Lok Nayak Jai Prakash Narayan, Nobel laureate economist Amartya Sen and freedom fighter and first chief minister of Assam Gopinath Bordoloi and renowned sitar player Pandit Ravi Shankar were conferred with the award. In tomorrow's episode we will bring you the story of the Bharat Ratna awardees from the year 2001 onwards. आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ कैन बी एक्सेस ऑन एट द रेट ए आई आर न्यूज अलर्ट ऑन ट्विटर न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर एप फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल्स सो ट्यून इन टू ऑल इंडिया रेडियो न्यूज फॉर आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ In tomorrow's episode we will bring you the story of the Bharat Ratna awardees from the year 2001 onwards. Azad Bharat ki baat Akashwani ke sath can be accessed on at @AIR news alerts on Twitter, news on AIR official YouTube channel, news on AIR app, Facebook and Instagram handles. So tune into All India Radio News for Azad Bharat ki baat Akashwani ke sath. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says every sector related to the growth engine of the country is running at full capacity and the financially weak are getting benefits of development for the first time. Prime Minister commissions the first indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant in Kochi launches development projects of around 3800 crore rupees in Mangaluru. India becomes fifth largest economy of the world with IMF's growth forecast of more than 7% for this year. 
Home Minister Amit Shah to chair the 30th meeting of Southern Zonal Council in Tiruvannamalai today. US slams China for continued violation of human rights in Xinjiang, Tibet and its other regions. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan calls for strengthening cooperation in education and skilling with Indonesia and Australia. National Rifle Association announces Indian squad for the upcoming ISSF World Championship and in cricket Akshar Patel replaces injured Ravindra Jadeja in the Indian team playing the Asia Cup. For quick news updates around the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at @AIR News Alerts. Mutthi bar angreez aur hamare vishal desh par raj karne ka sapna dekh rahe hain par hum inke sapne ko chakna chhod kar rahe hain. निकल पड़े स्वाधीनता के मत वाले स्वतंत्रता संग्राम की सुनी अनसुनी कहानियों के साथ स्वराज हर रविवार रात नौ बजे डीडी नेशनल पर अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो The United States has slammed China for continued violation of human rights in Xinjiang, Tibet, and its other regions. It has vowed to work closely with its partners and the international community to hold Beijing accountable for its abhorrent actions against its own people. Welcoming the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights report on Xinjiang that was released on Wednesday, White House Press Secretary Karen Jean-Pierre said. it deepened us's great concern regarding ongoing genocide and crimes against humanity that china is perpetrating during her daily news conference on thursday she said the us welcomes this important report as it describes authoritatively the abhorrent human rights treatment of the uighur and other minority communities by the people's republic of china government The US State Department has approved a potential 1.1 billion dollar sale of military equipment to Taiwan including 60 anti-ship missiles and 100 air-to-air missiles amid heightened tensions with China. The Pentagon's Defense Security Cooperation Agency informed this. It said sidewinder missiles which can be used for air-to-air and surface attack missions, harpoon anti-ship missiles and support for Taiwan's surveillance radar program are included in the package in morning matters now let us listen to a discussion on ins vikrant aircraft carrier par excellence the participants are vice admiral retired satish soni and ajay banerjee journalist we are discussing the indian aircraft carrier ins vikrant the first warship of this size to be made in india and commissioned in india the warship is 45000 tons and will carry a complement of fighter jets and helicopters at sea prime minister modi at the commissioning mentioned that it is not just a warship it is the outcome of 21st century's india's determination to be atmanirbhar or self reliant admiral soni we all know the numbers how big the ship is what will do what does it mean strategically firstly it is a dream come true we got the first vikrant in 1961 it was actually a new ship which was built for the royal navy in 1957 and then since they did not need it it was transferred to the indian navy the senior leadership of the indian navy had been wanting to build an aircraft carrier on its own in 2000 they got the sanctions and now today it has been commissioned so the fact that it is 76% indigenous we have proved to the world that we are now in the select group of six or seven countries who can make aircraft carriers on their own now the second aspect is that the aircraft carrier adds to the operational capability of the fleet the third aspect is today we are in a era of partnerships we are partnering the us japan australia and quad 
We have got trilaterals. There have been smaller but important partners like Sri Lanka, Maldives, Bangladesh. And they look up to India to provide them that maritime security. And we take great pride in being called the first responder or the preferred security partner for these countries. I think these three aspects are the major gains that we achieve by commissioning of INS Vikram. Admiral, the Prime Minister also mentioned that it's like a floating airfield. Could you explain to our listeners how is it a floating airfield? India is a peninsula country. We have a peninsula jutting out into the sea and which we say is a great advantage to us because from the southern tip, we on an airfield, you can launch an aircraft and within its radius of operational capability, it will be able to influence the maritime space below. Similarly, we have a thousand islands and those islands of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands, we call them floating aircraft carriers, which means that you can base an aircraft or we can base a ship there and extend an operational range. But with an aircraft carrier, you can extend this range even further. You can detect an intruder, you can intercept an intruder, which means it's a floating airfield. Admiral Sony, we already have aircraft carrier, the INS Vikramaditya, which was originally sourced from Russia in 2013. Possibly this is the first time that the two carriers will have some kind of contemporary technology. What about the technology part on both the carriers? For the aircraft carrier, technology of the weapon system, there are very few. There is not so much of weapon system fitted on board the aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier's main weapon is the aircraft itself. There is compatibility and they operate more technologically advanced aircraft. They have more technologically advanced EW systems, better machinery, better gas turbines, which means that they are able to operate at long distances without as much failures as earlier. Admiral Sony, China has two operational aircraft carriers. Japan has refitted two of its helicopter carriers. Korea has announced a carrier. Is it a kind of an Asian race which we are seeing to make carriers? For the Indian Navy, I would say we are not in any race with anyone. Now, the other Asian countries, they are developing aircraft carriers for their own reasons. China thinks of itself as a world power. They want to achieve it by 2050 in their ability to acquire that status. They need aircraft carriers so that their task forces can operate miles away from the coast. Japan is acquiring an aircraft carrier because of the expansion of the Chinese Navy and the coercive activities that it has been involved in. So each one is acquiring this capability for their own reason. We have an additional reason. In the Indian Ocean region, I think we foresee a threat from an expanding PLA Navy, which after South China Sea would only be too keen to come to the Indian Ocean region and dominate because of the economic interdependence they have with the countries of this region and because the sea lines of communication run through the Indian Ocean region. There is also the importance that the Navy ensign of the flag which flies atop all warships, ground stations and air bases has changed to a more Indian context. The aircraft carrier will also be deployed in various situations. We are among the six nations who have made an aircraft carrier which is more than 40,000 tons. Admiral, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you. My pleasure. You were listening to a discussion on INS Vikrant Aircraft Carrier Par Excellence. The participants were Vice Admiral Retired Satish Soni and Ajay Banerjee Journalist. The National Rifle Association of India, NRAI, has announced a 48-member Indian Rifle and Pistol Squad for the upcoming ISSF World Championship in Cairo, Egypt. London Olympics silver medalist Vijay Kumar is returning for his first international competition in four years. He will be competing along with Anish Bhanwala and Vijay Veer in the Rapid Fire Pistol Squad. World Championship silver medalist in Air Rifle, Olympian Anju Modgil will be competing in the Rifle 3 position event. There will be four Olympic quota places on offer in all the Olympic events for men and women in the World Championship. In T20 cricket, all-rounder Ravindra Jadeja has been ruled out of the rest of the Asia Cup squad due to knee injury. Akshat Patel will replace him in the team. The BCCI announced that All India Selection Committee has named Akshat Patel as replacement for Ravindra Jadeja in the ongoing Asia Cup. Ravindra Jadeja sustained a right knee injury and is currently under the supervision of the BCCI medical team. 
ऑल इंडिया रेडियो न्यूज हैज लॉन्च अ वीकली इंटरेक्टिव प्रोग्राम अभ्यास फॉर कम्पेटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन इट इज एम एट रीचिंग आउट टू स्टूडेंट्स एंड जॉब सीकर्स प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर कम्पेटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन द प्रोग्राम इज इन हिंदी एंड इज ब्रॉडकास्ट एवरी सैटरडे बिटवीन नाइन थर्टी एंड टेन पी एम Every week a subject is chosen. Students can ask questions through WhatsApp or email and a guest speaker or expert responds to their queries. Questions on each subject are selected on the basis of crowdsourcing from the students across the country. The program also includes segments like explainer, fact file, examination calendar and question of the week. The 23rd episode of the program will be aired tonight. The topic for this episode is geography. All India Radio News has gotten overwhelming response for the show with questions received from across the country. Dr. Sangamitra Shil Acharya, professor at Center of Social Medicine and Community Health, School of Social Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University, will be responding to the queries of the aspirants. This episode of Abhyas will be on air on 100.1 FM Gold at 9:30 p.m. today. You can access it on Twitter at AIR News Alerts or on AIR News official YouTube channel and also on the News on AIR app. Also for the next episode on the 10th of September, the subject chosen is Sanskrit. Students can send their queries on WhatsApp number 9289094044 or mail on abhyas.air@gmail.com. The deadline for submission of questions is 7th of September. In Hyderabad an eco-friendly Ganesh idol has been made using about 17000 coconuts as part of the Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations our correspondent reports that the 10 day long Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations are underway with pomp and people are thronging to have a glimpse of Lord Ganesha idols Following the high court intervention a few years ago and efforts made by government and NGOs the awareness among people over using environment friendly Ganesh idols has considerably increased more and more organizers of the Ganesh pandals are promoting green Ganesh idols replacing the ones made of plaster of paris for the first time the biggest Ganesh idol has been made of clay and other eco friendly materials Some organizers of pandals have made the idols completely with fruits and vegetables while some other adopted other techniques among interesting ideas one pandal organizers at the lower tank band area made the ganesh idol fully with coconuts an artist from kerala has traveled to hyderabad to adorn the ganesh pandal lakshmi ayar news hyderabad And now let us have a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have a generally cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 27 and maximum will be around 37 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain, minimum 25, maximum around 34 degrees. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Minimum temperature was 25 degrees and the maximum will be around 32. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm minimum temperature 28 maximum expected 35 Srinagar and Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening Jammu will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers Leh and Gilgit will have generally cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Hyderabad will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Bengaluru will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Visakhapatnam will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Guwahati will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. While Itanagar, Shillong, Kohima, Azol and Imphal will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers and Gangtok will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Made in India Vikrant joins naval fleet is the top headline in the Tribune. INS Vikrant's power plant can light a medium-sized town. Its kitchen can produce 16,000 chapatis every day and it can sail non-stop to Brazil without refill like the Pioneer. The Supreme Court wraps up 1,800 cases in four days under Chief Justice of India Uday Umesh Lalit reports the Hindustan Times. RBI moves to rein in digital lenders reports the Hindu business line chaos at Delhi airport 700 passengers stranded as Lufthansa flights cancelled reports the Asian age and finally another PIO makes India proud Starbucks recruits Lakshman Narsimhan as its next CEO informs the Times of India with the headline better latte than never 
And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says every sector related to the growth engine of the country is running at full capacity and the financially weak are getting the benefits of development for the first time. Prime Minister commissions the first indigenous aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant in Kochi, launches development projects of around 3,800 crore rupees in Mengaluru. India becomes fifth largest economy of the world with IMF's growth forecast more than 7% this year. Home Minister Amit Shah to chair the 30th meeting of Southern Zonal Council in Piru Anantapuram today, US slams China for continued violation of human rights in Xinjiang, Tibet and other regions and in cricket Akshar Patel replaces injured Ravindra Jadeja in the Indian team playing the Asia Cup. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.